What's up, party people? Hello, everyone. How's it going? I look washed out as shit. I had to I mess had... with the lights when we were we on don't Nemo's look stream. White, though. Like, white as we usually do. I'm when looking like do, the I second don't. coming of Jesus right now. Oh, my God. Um, You all probably know while we're here, why we're here. If you don't, it's okay. Welcome. You're about to, to find the, out. The shit show. I still look really white, but if I don't have enough light, then it makes it. I think it looks really good. Laggy. I am just updating well, isn't our that thumbnail nice real quick for you, but for me, here I am. Take me as I am. I'm gonna pull up the chat because I can't see anything that y'all are saying. I also need... This is an impromptu live. This was not scheduled. Yeah, it wasn't scheduled. We weren't going to go live, like I said, on Instagram yesterday. Because I've Jordan been having pain really problems. Long, yeah, long day. And then uh, this stuff happened and Jordan was like, I'm going to go make a TikTok while I'm like cleaning because we're having company over tomorrow. And she comes down. She's like, why am I wasting time going on TikTok? Let's just go live. <laughs> And like, now That's fair. we're here. That's fair. So we're going to talk about it. If we're still having in sync oh, no, issues, no. I'm sorry. That seems to Is be it? hopefully not. I've only seen one comment. I think. Okay. I haven't changed anything from last time. And last time we it seemed like we resolved it. So it might be a YouTube issue. W will you please to be fair. pull up? a article for me will you airdrop it to me yes i will thank you how's everybody's friday going i'm just getting you your lovely chats pa pulled up right now please bear with me I'm gonna magnify it so i can see everything there we go now we got it all right i'm gonna pull up this article real quick and we are going to talk about why we are here t g i f i didn't get a airdrop that's because i'm doing it right now oh. and lucky for you guys i only watch i only listen to the statement McKay has not yet. So you're going to watch McKay's live reaction to this ridiculous statement that her um, lawyer has issued for her uh, court date on Monday. Thank Elohim that it's Friday. Okay, we're going to thank something that's real that it's Friday. Thank Grid because that's the realest real that is out there. I have no airdrop except my iPhone. Oh, okay. Just text it to me. I'm on wired connection right now, so you can't airdrop it to me. All gay. Stupid. Woohoo from Washington State. Bless up. Grid bless everybody. Hope everybody's week was doing all right. We're getting we're edging to the to the new year here. <laughs> Although December is flying by, so it is indeed. What sync issues? I didn't no notice any. I don't notice anything. Lovely. I don't know if it's just people not perceiving it or if it is truly a YouTube thing. I don't know. Maybe I should watch it back and see if it does. Um, that. Hit that like button if you haven't yeah. already. This is an impromptu live. So I was not able to get out that we were doing this to as many people as I would have liked to. So make sure to smash the like button. And then let's hop into this article shall we i texted it to you dear okie dokie let me pull this up i'm gonna open this in chrome sync issues are ongoing it seems to be a youtube thing at this point am better health what the hell is that Google Chrome, open up. Okay.
Did you do anything to it last time? I messed around with it last time, and people seem to be okay with it. But I haven't messed with anything since. So. Somebody gave me uh, something to try. Maybe I'll do that. Okie dokie. Are you... We're getting Lista? lots of comments about it. So if there's anything that you'd like to do, now would be the time. Mm. Let's look here. I have no promises that there is anything that I can do at the present moment. Our cats are down here. I'm going to try this. Alicia or Alicia, Alicia Christensen, welcome to the terrestrial kingdom. We'll change the offset. Someone says sync issues always offset. resolve if you pause for a few seconds. So there's another thing. I changed the offset a little bit, so maybe that will help us out. Refreshing, maybe. Closing out your YouTube app and starting again if you're in the app. Thank you to Alicia, Alicia again. Kazoo is well. Song of Solace, thank you. We love our little animated He's membership kitty. He's a little crazy, crazy guy. Yes, Baloney and Tom are both down here messing around in boxes. And make sure your app is updated. Okay, so the reason that we are all gathered here today. <laughs> we are gathered here Is because... Today. I started getting a bunch of DMs and a bunch of tags on stuff. And I was like, what? What is happening? I'm confused. And then I saw it. So I watched, um, I think it was the KUTV2 news guy. It's a Utah news station. Read the statement. Um, so we are going to talk about what this means. We are not lawyers. I am a therapist with a master's degree in therapy. <laughs> I'm a stay-at-home dad. And so, uh, <laughs> legally, that is not our area. If you need legal, like, insight on this, there are plenty of people. Natalie Lawyer Chick happens to be our favorite. We've collaborated with her. She's lovely. I'm sure she will be talking about this shortly. Um, and so, that's not our area of expertise. Mormonism is. So, we'll chat about that, and then I'll give kind of some mental health professional perspective, maybe from my mental health professional opinion. Um and we'll kind of talk about that. So this is as of a few minutes ago, <laughs> really, no. is when I found out about it. But it was a few. Oh, it was this morning. That was when it was updated. This did not come out this morning. I would have heard about it by then. There's no way. It says 10, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Somebody would have sent it to me surely before now. Or did I just not get any notifications? Day. Maybe. But anyways... So, Ruby Frankie plans to enter plea agreement in child abuse case, blames co-defendant Jody Hildebrandt. Can we all just gasp uh -oh. at that? Can we all just Are we gasp? seeing the fracture of Joby play out in real time? Just wait till you hear the statement, okay? Oh, Jesus. So, Ruby has a court date coming up on Monday. Um, Jody's court date has... Jody has one scheduled. I think it's like two days after Christmas, if I recall. It's before the new year. So they both have court dates coming up. Ruby's is on Monday, which is why I think this is coming out now. So her lawyer has said that she plans to enter a plea agreement based on the charges that we're all very aware of at this point. And so her attorney is the attorney that we've talked about before in our previous videos. If you're not familiar, it is the Lamar Winward guy. And so... Her attorney has said that they wanted a quick resolution to this case, which is why they worked with the prosecution for a plea agreement. So I don't know if that's like, we don't know what Monday brings. Who knows? Maybe everything goes to shit and goes a different direction. Is that likely? I, I mean, in my not lawyer opinion, I would doubt that. But is it possible? Who knows? Who knows in this case? So let's read the statement that her lawyer issued. I have listened to it, read it a few times. McKay has not. No. Jordan was like, I'm going to do this. And I was like, okay, I'm cleaning the kitchen. <laughs> so I'm going to read it to you. And we're going to pause along the way. But we'll make it through the whole thing, I promise. And you can see McKay's live reaction. And you can drop your thoughts in the comments. Alrighty, Let's do it. 
So, Windward Law is making a statement on behalf of Ruby Frankie regarding the pending charges in the Washington County 5th District Court, along with her thoughts about her current family situation. Our client is working with the prosecutor's office and anticipates resolving this matter quickly by entering a plea agreement with the court on Monday, December 18th. That is this Monday. Now, the statement. Ruby Frankie is a devoted mother and is also a woman committed to constant improvement. Starting off strong quite literal video documentation made by ruby that this <laughs> is pretty much bullshit pretty much i would say she's devoted to abusing her kids but we'll come back to that later initially ms frankie they're using ms now Ooh. <laughs> ms frankie believed that jody hildebrandt had the insight to offer a path to continual improvement Miss Hildebrandt took advantage of this quest. Now I'm thinking we're like Lord of the Rings shit now. <laughs> or what is the quest? Why is that the is word? Is this we a main use? quest? A side a quest? A side quest. I'm confused. So Jody took advantage of this quest and twisted it into something heinous. Now that I agree with, this is heinous. That, yeah, that, absolutely. You've got me there. Hitting the nail on the head right there. Um, over an extended period, Miss Hildebrandt systematically isolated Ruby Frankie from her extended family, older children, and her husband, Kevin Frankie. This prolonged isolation resulted in Ms. Frankie being subjected to a distorted <laughs> sense of morality distorted. shaped by Ms. Hildebrandt's influence. So let's just pause there for a second. What are our thoughts on exit out of this? So we can just pause can on that focus. first paragraph. Let's yeah, let's let us discuss. Someone said Ms. is standard in legal proceedings, so that could just be a normal thing. Um, but nonetheless, what are our thoughts on... But I mean, it's not it's not wrong. It's kind of funny, <laughs> it is, is what I think. Funny. What are our thoughts on this first paragraph? They use the word distorted in I'm there. I'm going to say, uh, yeah, that was a big W. That's pretty funny. Uh, completely unintentional, I am sure. Uh, but the only portion of it that I would say is not stretching the truth is... Right here in the middle. Over an extended period, Miss Hildebrandt systematically isolated Ruby Frankie from her extended family, or older children, and her husband, Kevin Frankie. That, I do agree. Not even a bit of fabrication or anything that is spot on. I do believe she, that Jody isolated them. Yes. Okay. Just fighting in outer darkness. 100% intentional. Not the distortion. We can tell by um, all of the... Her pattern. Yeah, there's a whole pattern that Jody has exhibited over years and years that has been identified by people who have seen her and come forward and spoken on the matter. So. so that I do agree with that there was isolation going on. However, I'm always going to come back to the ultimate idea that ruby is a whole ass adult who is capable of making decisions and so is she was she manipulating think in some ways yes yeah. but did she also make conscious choices we're not talking about a young adult we're not talking about somebody with a not fully developed frontal cortex we're talking about an adult and a grown ass grown woman. ass adult and her is like the separation from kevin like do i think Jody has a pattern of separating husbands and wives. That is a pattern. But. Thank you, Tinkerbell. Thank you, Bell. Tinkerbell, for the gifted memberships. Um, Jody has to have a way to weasel in. Yeah. There's got to be something that Jody can pick up on that's a problem that then thereby allows her to enter into yeah. this marriage relationship, causing some triangulation, which is really inappropriate. And so there were potentially issues i think with kevin and ruby like they talked about in some of the videos that they did with connections which thereby sharing that vulnerable information which probably should only be shared very carefully with careful consideration then allow jody that information so i'm not i think jody is heinous and i think jody is definitely a mastermind of all this but i will be damned if the media <laughs> lets Ruby off the hook for any oh, of this shit. no. Because Ruby has been a piece of shit from the beginning. There's Jody no just coming amplified back. it. There's no coming back for, for Ruby. I say this a lot. You see that, like, Colleen Ballinger has returned and his back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. And the people who are like, what the fuck, are still like, what the fuck. Yeah. But 
it doesn't matter because she's just going to keep moving forward. There's always going to be a new audience and things. Family vlogging is already on the outs in, in a lot of senses. And not only that, but Colleen Ballinger did not get arrested. There were no charges against Colleen Ballinger or anything legally. But now there's this whole, I mean, media shitstorm that has happened. And whether or not she is convicted or a crime or whatever, that <laughs> I don't think that ever is going to go away yeah. for Ruby. Bobby Hounshell says, and she made horseshit choices long before Jody. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. this is yeah, this has been a long time coming. Well, and we can't forget that Ruby had the platform. Jody didn't have yeah. the platform. Ruby was giving parenting advice long before Jody ever entered the scene. Jody just put her on stage. Advice. Like she gave her a more sophisticated way to output that information because that was their marketing goal was targeting people who were wanting yeah. to improve their marriages, improve their relationships with their kids, their parenting techniques, whatever. Like that's, that's all is she just isolated that piece of it. And so, but Ruby still had the audience and that is a lot of damage. Yeah. Because that's, she, a lot of that's a lot of damage. Yeah. Uh, Downey Ruby is still in custody. She, they were not allowed bail. They were not going to get the option up until... Why the hell is this doing all this? Uh, they were not even going to be assessed until this upcoming hearing because the hearings kept getting moved back and everything. So they were denied bail up until this point. And at this point... And I don't even know reassess, if bail will be evaluated. Uh, yeah, I don't even know. Or on Monday. Cla so. or Colleen is back. She's vlogging again. Yep. If you're out of Business the loop on the usual. Colleen what stuff, Colleen going sucks. On with my... Our monitor's having problems. Monitor. It just like... It just like... Turned off. Hold on. Shit itself. <laughs> I can't control anything unless I have this monitor, so I'll be back. Hold down. Hold it down, Joe. That means we're still live, right? I didn't screw anything up. Yeah, everything. Okay. Um, let me scroll back up here. Yes. She was advocating for abusive parenting styles long before she partnered with Jody. 100%. My Thunderbolt cable might be fried. I might need it. Um, yes. So this is just the statement that was given by Ruby's lawyer. We don't have any updates or anything from, um, Jody's lawyer and her court date is after Christmas. So maybe, and Grimace. her, I mean, in my opinion, based and based on what we talked to Natalie, our lawyer friend from Natalie's lawyer chick about, um, Jody's lawyer is way more experienced in this area. So he might not issue a statement at all. Yeah. I... That that guy's definitely whatever he do does, it's not gonna be half assed. No, he's not messing around. So we might not even get anything from that. Thank you, Tori, for um joining the Telestial Kingdom. What was I going um just as a reminder, um obviously we do a little bit of, we do a little bit of trolling, a little bit of shit talking about what the lawyer says. He's just doing his job. Yeah. He is supposed to offer Ruby the opportunity, a fair trial. So, you know, just to put that out there, he's a defense lawyer. This is his job. It's not in his eyes whether she is guilty or whether she is innocent. He's just getting paid to make sure that she has a fair trial. So, indeed, not trying to disparage him or anything like no, that. No, we support defense lawyers here. They have a very important job. Yes. Welcome, um, new subscribers. You'll get your little name popped up if you subscribe, by the way. I think we need to move the little cat down. Maybe a little bit. Move the, little um, so let's up. read the second paragraph because that's where things get even better. Hold on, let me... Uh, While McKay moves our... Moving our little alert kitty down. Alert kitty. Um, All right. Yes. Okay, so Here second paragraph. This is what... There's some things I want to point out, but let's just talk about it for a second. During Ruby Frankie's incarceration in Washington County Jail over the past few months, she has actively engaged in an introspection that has allowed her to reset her moral compass and understand the full weight of her actions. Okay, so here's my immediate beef with this just right away. If your moral compass does not say that child abuse is bad, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> I truly don't. Well, yeah, what is, what is the path to rehabilitation it's concerning. It's concerning. Situation. 
So, and that's if she honestly believed that child abuse was okay, we might be talking like with something that's way more yeah, severe. It, it, and we're not even talking about something that would be like questionable or people could maybe reason that it is not child abuse. Like when you pull the duct tape out, th that's a very hard line. <laughs> And even if you weren't the one doing the duct taping, you're in yeah. the area, you're in the room, you're it, walking by, they you're in the house. They are your responsibility. You are responsible for They're emaciated. your safety. Like, hello. So I'm, I'm a little confused on that. I don't know what resetting your moral compass looks like. I don't really know what that truly, means. Truly, truly. Um, and, and if she was so under this spell that Jody had placed on her, that she was allowing this to happen right under her nose. She was in the same house, undeniably in the same house. How was it that just three months it being in jail just snapped her out of it? Indeed. I don't know. Seems a little goofy to me, but. And then now we have Miss Frankie you know. is committed to taking responsibility for the part she played in the events leading up to her incarceration. Here's also my beef with this statement. Just leading up? Yeah, no, this is a uh, <laughs> this has been a pattern, buddy. Leading but. up to the incarceration, like I'm confused as to and for the part she played. Like it, we're already I mean it already sounds like we're trying to minimize here. But if I am a third party person who has no idea what to like anything about this case. I mean, this sounds like a solid statement. She's thinking she's being introspective in jail. She's taking accountability. Like so yeah. far, it sounds really good. If you don't know who the fuck so she far, is. So good. And then demonstrating a sincere dedication to personal Bless you, growth. Tom. Bless you, Tom. And rehabilitation. She has actively begun the process by reaching out to members of her family. Through heartfelt apologies, she seeks to mend relationships and continue Dude, is this and contribute positively to the healing journey of her family. Is this what Barney was talking about, do you think? Maybe. Maybe. Ruby is aware. This is the divorce piece, okay? Ruby is aware that Kevin has filed for divorce. While she is devastated by this news. <laughs> She's girly. devastated that uh, Kevin, the husband that she ended up estranging, uh, is divorcing her, but yeah, she just allowed her children to be abused by Jody <laughs> and allegedly took part in that very same thing. While she is devastated by this news, she acknowledges and understands his anger and reasoning. You know what's missing from that, from a therapist perspective? And this is just a statement here, but from my mental health perspective, we're missing accountability here. Just acknowledging and Whoa. understanding his anger and reasoning without realizing that we were the one that contributed to it. That's a problem. Despite the pain, she respects his decisions. You don't have much of a choice, girly. We're in 2023. Girly pop. What are you doing? And remains hopeful that with time, she can contribute to rebuilding trust and fostering understanding within their family. Ruby has offered her full cooperation to help the children reunite with their father. So to me that, I mean, I'm going to come back to this, but it kind of sounds like she's hopeful that they'll get back together. But I could be misreading. But... That's just my kind of in-between-the-lines wonderment. And then the last paragraph, Winward Law recognizes the profound love that Miss Frankie holds for her children, and we are genuinely saddened that she found herself on this challenging path under the influence of Ms. Hildebrandt. Yeah, just let that yeah. simmer for a second. It is our firm belief that Ms. Frankie is a devoted mother who unfortunately was led astray. She is sincere in her commitment to securing the best possible future for her family. Uh-huh. And we remain hopeful that with the right support and understanding, she can navigate a path of healing and growth. First of all, this kind of sounds like a conference talk to me. Real talk. Lots of, like, floofy accountability, devotion, commitment, buzzwords, buzzword city, yeah. it's healing. giving SEO optimization. <laughs> it's giving, she is very sincerely sorry for this heinous thing that she's done, but I don't know if I'm really buying it. Yeah. And we all suspected, I think most of us were on team Ruby and Jody are going to turn on each other. If only for each other's benefit. Yeah. Because 
we f- still have the possibility that they still get along with each other and they're only using this narrative to secure the plea deal to save both their asses. Yeah, it's possible. Like, I could easily see the lawyer being like, it doesn't know, matter how you feel about this, Jody. After this one, I mean, I definitely believe that Jody's lawyer is cream of the crop. Indeed. But he's definitely going to have a tough time, especially because of this. For sure. Like, they're they're basically putting everything on Jody. So I don't know if that was in collaboration or if it was a, if I can do this first, then my client has a better chance situation, which, you know, is possible. I, <laughs> that's just the guy doing his job. Indeed. So they, I mean, she could still very well want a relationship with Jody, but her lawyer's like, yeah, well, that's not getting you a ticket out of prison. So, yeah, we got to do something. And that's, I mean, they did the same thing with, like, we see the same thing happening right now with, like, the Chad and Lori Daybell thing that was happening. Like, their Chad's lawyers are blaming a lot of things on um, Lori right now, and Lori's team blamed a lot of things on Chad. And I think that's just the nature of the game when you're doing something like this. Um, so, one of the things that I wanted to bring up was the apology thing. So demonstrating a sincere dedication to personal growth and rehabilitation, she has actively begun the process by reaching out to members of her family. And so I'm a firm believer in taking accountability and apologizing where necessary, but I'm skeptical I, as a human, would be skeptical about people's apologies in a situation like this yeah. when we're trying to get out of jail. Yeah. Now she's she's been caught and she's doing whatever she can to earn her freedom back. And it's I don't... Giving a uh, fish out of water. I just... Ruby has never cared about people's opinions. No. Because how many times have people called her out? She's got haters for yes, days. Yes, yes, like absolutely. No shit. And the they've never offered apologies. They've never been interested in doing any sort of apology. Any time something weird happened or people were up in arms about it, it was all just no. You don't understand. It, it just looks bad, but you don't understand. You're not a part of our family, even though I'm shoving a camera in their faces 24 seven. And then after that, Oh, that was a huge mistake. I was just doing it because I was in distortion Mm -hmm. and now I'm trying to gain or, you know, chase clout in a different, um, a different medium now. So it's like the first time she's finally choosing to apologize or, you know, make some sort of wrong to be right is when she's, suddenly facing prison time for (laughs) not even not just small crimes talking about felonies yeah so and i don't know this is where like natalie's expertise comes in because i don't know i think the judge has to accept the plea deal right like i think the judge has to okay it i mean if both parties are in agreement then it's probably not going to be a problem but i think judge has to say yay or nay right yeah there's got to be some law people in the audience yeah the judge can deny a plea deal so there's a shot but if the prosecution works for the state but obviously like what what are they offering here because isn't the deal like you have to do this in exchange for correct like she would have to plead guilty and then they would reduce her sentence or something like that yes because i an example i mean i don't think she's getting out of jail time altogether no i don't think so either i don't think this is off the hook for ruby i think this is i think we anticipated that she's gonna try to get out of this because ruby's not as yeah as much as she can ruby's not fit for jail y'all she's a utah mommy blogger like Jail and Utah mommy blogger don't work out very well. Yeah, Mormon to to boot. I could see Jody, and I think we've talked about this before. I could see Jody saying, "No, I'm not admitting guilt for this. I'm not taking a plea deal." I could see her doing that because she's stubborn and stupid. 
I think Ruby is desperate at this point, would be my guess. That's how this statement reads to me. Yeah. Is desperation to just get out of the situation no matter what it is. They want it resolved quickly. Like, if it's, you say this, you do this, you get out of jail. I think she's like, where do I sign? I'm done. Because you have to, the conditioning that she was experiencing all leading up to this moment, I, I mean... To begin with, she was already conditioned to believing as a Mormon that she belonged to the true church, the only true church that can get you to be an exalted being and become as God is. And that kind of sets you up for these ideas. Now, it doesn't always. I'm not saying that Mormons are out here being fucking crazy and they all abuse their kids because that's certainly not the case some of them do some of them do yeah at (laughs) just look at the news every month you will find something um but it puts people in a position when they're susceptible for other influences to come in and reinforce those kinds of ideas now one of those people is very exploitative jody came into her life and was feeding her all of these additional ideas and conditioning her to believe that there are only two things in the universe. There's truth, which is unchanging, instituted by God, and then there is everything that is not truth, which is distortion. Yeah. And being arrested could go one of two ways. You can get people snapping out of it, which is what I truly, despite my utter loathing for Jody and for Ruby is truly what I hope is going to happen or it could backfire and they will dig their heels in even more because you've just reinforced the idea that everybody is out there to destroy truth. Everybody else who is not living truth is living in distortion and they are therefore trying to destroy the people who are living in truth. So I hope that maybe being separated because From what we've heard, for the most part, they have been separated. Your entire um, fancy state hospital stay, or not hospital, hotel stay. (laughs) Um, I would hope that that has had some impact on her in breaking the hold that Jody has had over her. But, you know, obviously she, I mean... She was influenced and she had all of this going on, but (laughs) it's when it boils down to it, when you're committing crimes, it just is no excuse for that. Like, ultimately, you have to you have to reckon with the things that you've done and the severe, long, lifelong damage that you've done to your kids and to other people. Indeed. I'm trying to... Somebody asked if the judge is Mormon. Obviously... It's likely. There's one surefire way... Is is the judge white? Is the judge a man? They live in Washington County. We don't want to hate on judges. They have a responsibility to be unbiased. That's part of their job, okay? But there... It is a responsibility. It is not a requirement. It does not mean that they have to take that seriously. So I'm trying to see if I can see the judge's background if he went to BYU. Um... Because that gives us one indication, though, just because you went to BYU doesn't mean that you're not ex-Mormon. So, again, this does not mean it doesn't indicate things will go a certain way if the judge is Mormon or not. Because the reality is most Mormons are going to look at this and go, this is heinous behavior. No justification. Yeah. I don't know. I like to believe that Utahns are tough on crimes involving children, but there's really nothing that would indicate that is that they're more tough on those kinds of crimes it's hard to say so i'm trying to pull up the filing are there any non-mormon humans in utah yeah there are plenty there's a lot Uh, mostly like utah county is really heavily mormon populated but like salt lake proper like salt lake county it is actually i probably closer to the 50 percent mark if not under it it really wide, uh, widespread non-Mormonism in Salt Lake County, which is, I mean, not atypical of 
population centers. All People right, being different see. than the rest of the norm for the state, but like outside in the the lower dense popular or pop population areas, there's definitely a. Uh, All right, I've got his. A lot of Mormons. They're just kind of spread out more. What would happen if Warren Jeffs died? He would be dead. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how things are going for the FD LDS. I think there are still people who are holding on to hope, but I mean, like Colorado City is starting to be, what's the sister city for Colorado City? Uh, Something Creek, Short Creek. Short Creek, yeah. They're, they're kind of releasing the hold on, on those areas that people are, okay. outsiders are moving in. They don't have the God Squad or things anymore. So I think it's kind of, I reached an end. pulled up the information for the judge that was on the most recent filing, which is John J. Walton. This was on the and Walton. Um, the most recent filing that I can pull up from the um, case history court exchange documents from the Utah system. So let me pull. Let me let it, other people see it. This guy looks like the gym teacher that would yell at you. So in high school, judge appointed to the fifth district court in November, 2005 by governor John M. Huntsman. Let me make this bigger. Hold he on. serves Beaver iron in Washington counties. Beaver <laughs> there in Washington. Um, judge Walton graduated from Utah state university in 1990 and the J. Rubin J. Rubin Clark law school at Brigham Young university <laughs> in 1993. Prior to his appointment at the bench, judge Walton served as a deputy Washington County attorney. Before this, he was an associate and shareholder with Jones, Waldo Holbrook and McDonough. He was appointed as a special assistant United States attorney in 2005 Mc and is still a member of the Mc Bar Association for Southern Utah. So <laughs> he has an extremely judgy face. He Good does have a very judgy career. face. He does look like a judge. So yeah. he could be an ex-Mormon. Who knows? He could have left the church. There's plenty of ex-Mormons yeah. who went to BYU, but he did go to BYU Law School, which is you got to be Mormon to go to BYU, right? So there is something to be said here for there is high potential that this judge is Mormon. Yeah. He's got the Mormon shine. The glow, if you will. The Mormon glow. What is it yeah. that Ethan calls it? Is it the glow? I think I think it was the glow. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ex-military gym teacher vibes. <laughs> yeah. So probably Mormon, likely. I would say more likely than not if we were to yeah, right. do bets. We can't even Garmy check with this the the robes on man no we can't um what's up with that i'm wondering well, let's see keep talking while i look at this i'm talking the mormon glaze that's what the glaze that's what it is i was like yeah. doesn't sound right. the mormon glaze he's too clean looking I have a non-Mormon lawyer friend who went to BYU for law school. That's crazy. I don't know who is choosing to go to BYU. It's so funny because we would talk about BYU and like so many people on TikTok, they'd be like, what the fuck is BYU? <laughs> I'm like, man, it really is nobody's fucking business outside of Utah or Mormonism. They don't care. Oh man, double special garments, the three layers of clothes. With Bro is sweating. They probably have to keep the courtroom so goddamn cool. But I mean like more, like lawyers too, they always have to wear their jackets and shit like that. So I guess there's also that. So that school is disturbing. Yeah, the J Rubin Clark, I don't fuck with J Rubin Clark uh law school especially cuz Jay Rubin Clark was like a famous racist apostle. Yeah. So that's cute. Famous anti-semitic apostle too right around World War 2. So that's cute. So I pulled up his um I pulled up his retention evaluation report from 2020. So if you don't know you vote on judges, right? Every so often they're up for Yeah reinstatement or, or whatever you want to call it and so they have reports that get funny filed. how uh, the supreme court doesn't do federal that. supreme court doesn't get that interesting um, so there's some comments 
that people have made observers who have worked with him about him. So I figured might be interesting to read some of this. This is only from a few years ago, three years ago. Um, all observers reported that Judge Walton was knowledgeable and efficient, appearing exactly on time, handling cases at a brisk pace, but in a thorough manner without seeming rushed, prepared, well-informed. Um, business-like manner was formal, but not stuffy. It's giving form letter. Calm, patient, <laughs> polite, and professional. Pronounce names correctly. That's always good. Um, I mean, how hard is it in Washington County? He ensured the defendants were in agreement with change hearing dates, and he praised a victim's address to the court, allowing the defendant to turn to the victim to apologize. While he seldom smiled, he consistently made good (laughs) eye contact. (laughs) He's not here to play. He's here to fucking do his job. Treats all sides of different types of cases equally. He often asked if there was anything he should know before sentencing and listened attentively to responses. On time? Can't be Mormon. That Mormon (laughs) standard time. Um, he was specific and detailed when That's explaining procedures, showed a thoughtfulness and willingness to consider each case individually based on its merits. Observers provided many examples of Judge Walton was more supportive of defendants than the attorneys representing or prosecuting them, which sent a strong message of his concern that each participant was treated fairly with the best defense possible. That's fair. Um, three observers, in addition to their positive reports described above, commented on Judge Walton's very business-like demeanor that seemed curt or cavalier in some situations. His lack of concluding remarks at times left individuals uncertain if their case was incomplete, and his shuffling of papers and looking at his computers while others were making statements gave the appearance of not carefully listening to information being provided. Uh-oh. Um, so all in all, and as far as, like averages for things like minimum performance standards for like ratings based that the judges get he's above the minimum performance standard by a bit like they based on the questions and the ratings that they get they scale them for three categories legal ability integrity and judicial temperament and administrative skills the minimum skill for all of those is like a 3.5 ish he's above He's a 4.5, a 4.7, and a 4.7 on all of them. So he's not a he's not a judge who's performing below standards, according to the observers. The observers. Um, and then also descriptors. Let's see if there was any. He got marked for being impatient. Higher than the average for the district court. Which is interesting. But he was marked higher than the average for the district court for also being impartial and ethical. So, I mean, Hmm. we don't have any indicators that he's a piece of shit. So. Yeah. Which is generally good. That's a good sign. I mean, he could be. Who knows? Somebody said or somebody asked if Ruby were to be excommunicated, would it be worse for her to have a Mormon judge? Not necessarily. Um, The thing to understand regarding excommunication and what it means in the Mormon church is that usually, um, and the reason that they call it a court of love is because excommunication is one of the steps to overcoming sin if your sins are great enough. They have to say, you need to show your faithfulness to the Lord by doing everything over again. So you're excommunicated, but you can be brought back into the fold, so to speak. Um, So while a lot of times excommunication is a finality, and it should be if you are kicked out of a church for doing very many people are kicked out out of the church for doing like just living their lives because they're not straight or they're not cis or whatever. Um, A lot of times uh, those people might still be believing in the Mormon gospel and trying to come back. Uh, Now that is also the case when it comes to heinous crimes. Usually the, uh, the church or your, your leaders will hold one of those excommunication hearings, the court of love. Without you, you get excommunicated. 
because of the negative association that you have with um, the name of the church. It's called protecting the good name of the church. So they don't want your name, especially when it's in the press like Ruby's is. So I'm surprised that they haven't excommunicated her. Um, they're probably waiting for the outcome of they are. Yeah, they're probably court decision. waiting. Probably going to be when she's convicted because innocent until proven guilty. Um, yeah, she it, it would be hard, but, you know, anyway, getting back to the, the judge portion, a lot of these older people. And, and I mean, I'm not trying to like dog on him or whatever. You, when you're a judge, you, you're more experienced. That is just how the world works. Um, they understand that. I feel like people who are judges tend to be Mormon leadership, so they are more involved in the church. So I don't think necessarily that it would have any, and it shouldn't. It shouldn't have any bearing the standing with your church because ultimately you don't really have a say in that. You are at the mercy of your local leaders when it comes to your excommunication and how they perceive and are quote unquote guided by revelation to deal with you so no i don't necessarily think that it would be worse for her to have a mormon judge if she were to be excommunicated so maybe she'll go all scientologist now honestly she'd make it uh, jody should take a look at scientology she'd make it big in scientology i mean i understand where it's people are coming psycho. from though in the sense that this is like the corruption and involvement of the mormon church in every aspect of civil society particularly in utah cannot be understated yeah so i understand like and some people get kind of like conspiratorial about it and are like you know everything is mass kind of conspiracy with the mormon church interfering with government and i think it's because we have a lot of instances that have pointed to involvement where there shouldn't have been well it, it, it should not go unnoticed that despite their leaning toward a little more than 50% of the population of Utah identifying as Mormon, but over 80% of Utah's representatives in state legislature are Mormon. They are overrepresented and it is a pillar, it is a tenant of these people's lives to live Mormonism to, and they... If they go to the temple, they covenant in the temple with God directly and are to be held accountable to this, that they are to consecrate their time, talents, and money toward the building up of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Full stop. So things are influenced by these ideas floating around within Mormonism and I have no doubt that there are people out there who have this cognitive dissonance where they're like, this is what the church does. This is what we believe, but this is not what I think. This is not what I'm going to do. But, you know, obviously I can't speak for everybody. I, it's hard to know. But when things in Utah state legislature or government or what have you line up with what the church thinks, it's really frustrating to think that it's not going to play play a big role. I was going to pull up to be sure. I just looked at the final notice. So Jody's hearing for those that were asking is on December 27th. Wonder if Ruby will be able to start up a YouTube channel again. <sighs> no shot. No way. Yeah. I don't, I don't the think that we, allow that. the thing that we haven't talked about, is yes we want intense consequences for this behavior because it's unacceptable but we also haven't really spent a lot of time on what life looks like for ruby after she gets out of jail because i hope it's fucking terrible <laughs> her life is going to be bad because if i was ruby i mean it's going to be dependent because if she wants any contact with her kids she'll have she'll need to stay in utah if she wants to prove that but in my opinion like custody speaking but i would want to get the hell out of utah because there is not going to be a space that she can go anywhere in utah where she will not be recognized yeah no this no case shot. has gone national it's to... massive 
And there is no way that you are someone in Utah unless you are like above the age of 75 or yeah. don't turn on the TV or have social media to not know at least like that woman looks familiar to me. Yeah. Which those Venn diagrams are like a circle basically. <laughs> Right. So her life, I mean, as much as I want maximum punishment for what she's done, she will not be able to live a normal life. Yeah, no. And regardless of the outcome. And I don't know how trial. financially, I don't know what they're, I don't know if she can live without working the rest of her life because that's the other consideration. She doesn't have the channel anymore. She doesn't have whatever money she was pulling from Jody or yeah. Jody was financing her lifestyle. Um, Probably, I mean, Kevin was paying the mortgage payment. We know that for the house or they had already paid off the house. He was covering living expenses. So Ruby wasn't paying for anything. So whatever money's left over, is that enough for her to not have to get a job again? Yeah. Because this is going to go on a record. Like you're going to have to, unless yeah. they do something with the plea agreement that reduces the charges she's going to have three felonies on her record that anytime you apply for a job you're going to have to have listed on there yeah. and so which to be fair i don't think that should be a thing but no I, for all, certain all of charges, the other social yeah all of the other social ramifications are sufficient punishment along with only fans <laughs> only fans can you imagine? along with um you know, obviously the incarceration. She did have a lot of money, but, but we have no knowledge of whether or not that was spent responsibly. Yeah. We don't know what she did with it. Or if it, yeah. if it, We don't know if she funneled it all to Jody. Saved or What if Jody whatever. took all her money? Yeah, that's possible, honestly. Because if Kevin was paying for all the kids' living expenses and shit, and she had no need to really spend money, Maybe that was part of it. Like, because if we're talking about Jody being manipulative and abusive and engaging in patterns of codependency, then we can look at financial extortion as something. And not allowing Ruby to have access to those things would be something that would further isolate Ruby if they were. Yeah. If it was truly as severe as the statement is making it out to seem. I bet she dumped a bunch of money into connections. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't. We also have that Jody has a lot it. of money. And so there's not going to be really an issue on Jody's account of funding yeah. her defense, I don't think. With all the money she was charging for therapy, which is just yeah. from a therapist who works when in I'm, Utah is ridiculous. She's definitely had that house for a while. And I, I remember looking at a long time ago when we figured out where she lived like before th this shit happened and I think she got a really good deal on that massive house if I remember correctly unless I'm thinking of, I know Jordan Ruby, Page did something like that too though Ruby and Kevin definitely paid way less than they should have for the house that they're in or what other people had paid for that same house are you sure you're not confusing them with Jordan Page? I'm almost positive that. Remember, Jordan did that too. Because they, on the records, they had bought it from the church. They did buy it from the church, but I don't know yeah. if the church, the church is about money. So I don't know if they gave yeah, it to him for any know. less than it was worth. I don't know. I would have to go back and look. I, I could be wrong. Maybe. It's been a while since that. That was probably in pff, fucking July, maybe. I don't know. This was a long time ago. We were Quick at this. TLDR, if you are just getting here. Um. Ruby Frankie's lawyer issued a statement about the upcoming hearing on Monday where he confirmed that she will be entering into a plea agreement with the court to resolve this matter quickly and then gave a very ridiculous four paragraph statement um, that was full of bullshit and fluffy words and yeah. healing and she's apologizing. S silly goose stuff. And is going to take accountability and has apologized to her kids and I'm like girl as a survivor of a mom with mental illness and, and who was abusive. Um, every child is going to respond to that differently. I think the other thing that we have to be mindful of in this situation is that we can't police what Chad and Sherry decide to do about their relationship with her from this point. Yeah. Because they might decide that they want to engage with her. 
because she's maybe doing some rectifying. Maybe she goes to therapy. Maybe, you know, she takes accountability, apologizes, and decides to make some serious changes. Then her kids might feel open to having a relationship with her. And they might never want to speak to her again. And so we have to be mindful that, one, we don't have all the information. And two, we don't know what their healing process looks like. We know from the limited things that Sherry has said on her social media that this has been devastating for her for a long time. And not just when, like, she went to jail, but when Sherry made the decision to cut her off and not speak to her anymore. Yeah. And those kinds of things. Like, like long before. Long before. And all the healing that these kids... I mean, Sherry has said she's in therapy, so all the things that she's probably going over with her therapist, like backtracking through her childhood maybe things that she thought were okay that were actually not it's really common to experience um a radiated woman brought up also can't remember if any have spoken since the arrest but if you haven't seen the mormon stories with jesse um a relative of jody it explains a lot i think they had to was did did they have to remove that one too no it was adam steed oh yeah adam steed was on mormon stories podcast but they had were threatened with legal action they had to take the the episodes down for that one but definitely go check out jesse's their interview was really good yeah their interview was fabulous hellfire fox said could this have been the thing that the kids were alluding to was going to drop on their social media that's what i'm wondering yeah, because last time we had spoken on this, we watched a clip from Bonnie, and she was kind of alluding that there was stuff that was going to happen. That was going to happen. So this could be. It could also be because the custody case with the kids, like the the younger children, is completely sealed now, and bon- like Sherry was at least attending. The custody hearing at one point so it could be related to the custody hearing for which we would have no information um so it could also be that and we're totally off base because that's not yeah, anything be. that we would find out from the media um sarah said that the story that's bonnie and sharing didn't want out is that the two teen girls left sherry's custody to go into foster care i am not 100 percent on that have you heard anything about that That is not information that I have heard. I know that the girls were picked up from what's her face's house by Oh, so the Adam Adam Steed interview is uh, not private. It is um, is unlisted. It's unlisted. So apparently, if you have the link, you can view it. Adam was a victim of Jody's. Um, He was the person in the situation where Jody had shared information with outside parties and actually got him expelled from BYU and she was um, punished by the board. Didn't lose her license uh, but Doppel punished her and that's the reason why she ch- changed from whatever she was calling therapy to connections. She, she did a little rebrand and then that's what landed us here yeah i can't not his fault it's 100 percent jody's fault but i haven't heard anything like inflection point about the custody case in particular about where the children are now because if the children if they're implying that the children i mean it's kind of like a do and don't say because if we're saying that the children aren't with sherry then we're implying that they are in foster care and if we're saying that they are with sherry then that's concerning because then people potentially know where they are so would i be surprised if they decided not if sherry was like this might not be safe for them i wouldn't doubt that but i don't have any information on that. would they even be able to make that decision themselves who the teenage kids to no they could give input okay which honestly whatever they think is best for them if they they are teenagers still are hurt by sherry's absence or whatever that's perfectly valid i mean they've been probably manipulated and told some things about sherry that probably aren't yeah. true yeah so it's hard to say obviously there are concerns with the foster care system and everybody says that it's awful and nothing ever happens to change that but you know it is what it is 
Yeah, everything with the minor case got sealed, especially after the Daily Mail reporter snuck into the courtroom and shared information that was yeah. extremely inappropriate and shouldn't have gone public. And that was the last information that we heard from the case, other than the judge setting out that it's officially sealed and nobody is allowed to talk about it that's present. Yeah. Um, uh, bewitched brought up a good point which means after jody was reprimanded she chose to reoffend. this is exactly what i'm talking about when i'm saying that you can either be caught and say oh shit snap out of it i'm not supposed to be doing this or in jody's case in that situation she was um she dug her heels in even more she said oh they the the board doesn't like that i'm doing what and what she described as revelation from god about how to help these people so i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing but i'm not gonna be held accountable by the board i'm gonna rebrand i'm gonna be a coach or what is the a mental fitness instructor or trainer. whatever mental fitness trainer whatever the hell and i'm gonna keep doing what i'm doing because i know that what i'm doing is right because it's coming straight from god so yeah indeed and then we also, I mean, the other thing, and I think somebody mentioned it earlier, is we have the, I mean. Thanks, Miku Headphones, for bringing that up. The reason that everything got delayed to begin with was the copious amount of discovery that was, had to be gone through by both lawyers. And so, you know, knowing what, if I was Ruby's or Jody's lawyer and I'm pouring through discovery and I'm seeing what's in there and it's pretty damning. Then I'm going to be like, you know, a plea deal so that all this shit doesn't get laid out for the world to see might be a good idea. Yeah. Because your ass is True. grass if the world sees this. You know, like there's a jury, I imagine. I mean, Jody and Ruby, I know people think that they're mastermindy and I think in some ways they are in a manipulation sense, but both of them are also kind of stupid. And so yeah. they're not communicating via an app that's not going to be accessible. Yeah, I all think the texts, they... all the emails, everything's out there. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily think it's stupidity. It's just they they were fully fucking committed. They Jody does not believe that she was doing anything wrong, and I believe that one hundred percent because yeah. she was doing this for decades. I mean, she started up her consulting or whatever the her little practice in like 2004 that thing with um adam um was in like 2011 or thereabouts one of it, in that time period and then after that rebrand she was just doing connection and she even says that connections was something that was in the works for such a long time mm -hmm. so i she was 100 percent all in there's nothing wrong with what i'm doing the board's fucking crazy thinking that i'm doing anything wrong they don't have god's input so they were just doing this out in the open air and jody was ruining people their relationships and their lives so bad that everybody just shut the fuck up about it and she didn't have to worry about anything coming of it even if she lost them as a quote-unquote client or whatever because i mean even adam for a long time was not identified in this the story in the news sources that we were looking about it and he really kind of kept it under wraps up until i think maybe he came uh came forward on reddit at one point but i don't think he made any like public appearance about it until he was on mormon stories no i don't think so i could be wrong but i'd never heard of him before that and we knew of that situation before like way last year. Yeah. And I mean, the other factor that we have to consider in this case is there are children involved in this. And so discovery is going to include the children. Um, like what was happening to the children and a trial is going to be very emotionally taxing and traumatizing potentially for children. Yeah. Um, I mean, even the, I mean, even Chad and Sherry, I mean, to have all this, like, the worst things about your childhood and the worst things about your mom on display for the entire world to see, I mean, that's going to be 
that's going to be pretty traumatizing. Um, and it's not that they should have to keep that secret because they shouldn't have to if they don't want to. Short stuff. Why don't you take a break, buddy? But, you know, that's the other factor that we have to consider is discovery probably to some degree involves the children. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens with Jody at this point. If her lawyer is worth his snot, then I think he will strongly advise her to not <laughs> try to take this to trial. <laughs> like, I would imagine that that would be his top priority at this point is to make sure that this doesn't go to trial. Yeah. <clears throat> um, But if she's determined, he's her lawyer and she has the right to say no. And he, I mean, I think he also has the right to drop her as a client. Yeah, I think I'm. So there's that possibility too, I <laughs> yeah. imagine. Can you but imagine? I met like, you know, we're not lawyers. So the, I don't know, the legal what... part of this is not our expertise. You're talking about Jody's lawyer? Mm-hmm. I, could they, po I don't know. I guess for her to go all the way and be like, yeah, I need the guy who is um, the only lawyer in the state of Utah to defend that is qualified to defend against capital punishment to be my lawyer. <laughs> I mean, it's concerning, or if she's you know? just she's got the capital. She's like, fuck it. Uh, I'm just going to do the whole shebang. I got the the money for the defense. I could see Jody being bitter, though, too. I could see Jody being bitter and because Ruby's turning against her and blaming her. Like, I could see if she got a hold of this. I mean, if I was her lawyer and I didn't want this to go to trial, maybe I wouldn't let her see the statement. <laughs> because she just threw Jody under the bus big time. And that yeah. might create some anger. Like, you say that this is all me? Well, guess what? Let's pull out some discovery and talk about why this is you, too. You know what I mean? Like, I could easily see being on the other end of this and going, this isn't just a me thing. So yeah. let's pull out the discovery and let's show how invested you were in this shit, too. Because, I mean, at that point, I want to drag her under the bus with me. If we're going yeah. down, I'm taking you down with me. I just want to say this real quick to make an example out of this person. Uh, the user short stuff in the chat said, this is the last I will say of, of it. Miku's headphones is crazy, so I can't have an opinion because they were speculating on sexuality that has not ever been declared which we don't do here. I'm glad that Miku's headphones was taking care of it as it is. If you are so upset that you are going to make personal attacks on the mods, I'm going to help you out Bro, on calming out. down. You're going to get a nice little 24 hour timeout. So chill if you want out. to participate in this, do not make <laughs> personal attacks on people who you don't know anything of. So just an FYI here, I guess that's a twofold. Uh, thing as far as we know there have been no excommunications of ruby or jody at this point usually if there's a case of this magnitude and the church is getting some attention from it they'll usually do it publicly they'll usually make a statement like they did with chad and Lori. i can't remember what the statement said maybe i can find it Because the church doesn't like getting heat. Let's see if I can find Chad's. Shout out. Yeah, the, uh, just a quick explanation on why we don't do that. It is not relevant. It does not play any part into how anybody behaves. And furthermore, it perpetuates the absolutely just asinine idea that is going around in culture war, especially on the right wing, that people who are queer are also criminals and are out to get your children, which is absolutely not true. 100%, we don't talk about that. We don't speculate on it. It does not matter. If they are, then we should respect people's wishes in giving them the space to come out when they are ready to do so but it is not our job to decide when that is. So we don't need to talk about that kind of shit. Let's see if they pull up the letter. I'm trying to find the letter that they gave for Chad and Lori Daybell. 
the statement that they made. Oh, fair. To just give an example. Bring that up. Let's make this the last thing because I am starving. I'm so hungry. <laughs> we weren't going to be on here for too long anyway. Yeah. You can be LGBTQ and you can commit crimes. But there is no correlation between the two things. They can both be true, but there's no correlation. And statistically, it's the straights, baby. Sorry. <laughs> statistically speaking, it is the straights. It's the so. men, statistically speaking. Yeah. Um, let's see. And not even just statistically. I'm talking also proportionally it is also the straights <laughs> dang i cannot find this statement i think kevin is just as culpable he should be facing charges yeah i am of the opinion that he is definitely not free of wrongdoing obviously he was also i would say victim, neglect at this point for kevin at the That's very my least I, I think he was neglect Obviously, I understand that there were external factors where I guess maybe he didn't know what was going on. But, I mean, oh, fucking somebody asked about my shirt. Any guesses? This isn't a new shirt, so some people might know. But I'll let some people ask. As a CSA survivor, I it was the cishets that were the most dangerous to me as a child yes yeah um there's this woman i see on tiktok who does a weekly update of people making the news for uh crimes against children especially csa situations and uh, the numbers <laughs> are bleak are the straights okay <laughs> it came to mind with mckay's statement so i can't Bro, find no. <laughs> i can't find the statement for Lori and chad but there was an article or a video that was done by court tv that said that they were given a statement saying that chad was excommunicated for promulgating promulgating i hate that word teachings oh, and wow. doctrines contrary to the church which is consistent because he had basically started his own little schism movement of weird mormon shit um yeah. but they're not afraid to excommunicate people publicly and they will do it if they're getting a lot of heat yeah. Teo Twadwaki, here's a virtual hug. This is the best I can offer. Uh, okay, I'm uh, who said this was the most unreadable shirt I have? Uh, I probably is the it's most unreadable shirt. This is also an alternate logo for Australian brutal death metal band Disentomb. Um why is Ruby in county cuz she hasn't been officially sentenced yet? Mormon scheme or is my death metal band name. Mine would be the sure sign of the nail. That I is brutal. I'm interested to see what this means for Jody's direction and sentencing. I don't know what the again, law isn't my area, I'm a therapist, but the I'm interested to see like the implications of the plea bargain and what that has or the whatever the plea agreements they haven't decided yet that's not official that's still just being discussed um what implications that potentially has for jody's case like if that means that if jody ended up going to trial because she didn't want to do that if she had to tell like if ruby would have to testify or if because of that agreement she doesn't have to or like yeah. i'm just curious about what the implications for that are because that's the interesting thing when you have like in my mind when you have criminal cases like this like it's like a perfect example with Lori and chad daybell is they play off of each other and like the decisions being made with one criminal case that's being prosecuted has implications for the other like oh this side is saying this and so that means we have to go a different direction yeah. with this or like, I'm interested in what this means and if this potentially, if this decision ended up changing direction for Jody's legal team. Like, mm. if there was any, like, if this decision and this statement 
made any changes and decisions or if they're all on the same page that plea agreement is the way to go. I don't know if Lori was ever officially excommunicated. I know that Chad she definitely was. is not going back to church. I can tell you that much. <laughs> no, <laughs> not going to be able to do that. Will TPZ. BYU keep Sherry in school during all this? I don't see why they wouldn't. TPZ. Any thoughts on mayhem? I do not really like first, second wave black metal. I definitely don't like Burzum. Um, but I do like newer black metal. Did Ruby's parents do the same thing to her that she's doing to her children? Is it possible? Sure. I mean, I think her parents are shitty people for a few different reasons, but is it possible? Yes. Do all people who have been abused go on to abuse other people? No. Statistically, are they at a higher likelihood? In some cases, yes. But that doesn't mean that everybody yeah. who is abused by a parent goes on to abuse their own children. Yeah. But is it also possible that a lot of the things that Ruby learned, she learned from her parents? Yes. It's a possibility. Is it possible that we had yeah. insecure attachment going on that might have caused issues? Is it possible that we have mental illness going on? Totally. Like, there are a few factors here that we're, especially if this isn't going to trial, that we're not going to get answers to. Like, somebody asked if they would do a psyche eval and without a trial. Yeah. No. I mean, just looking culturally at where we've come from, especially in the United States, we live in a time period it's still transitional to be like spanking is abuse there. You will get so many people who push back on that idea. So to think that there were not so great things in people's past, it, it's not like out of the question. I'm not going to allegedly, I'm not saying that every parent was like super strict and hit their kids before a certain year, but you know, an insecure attachment is kind of a descriptor for when you are a child, like the main goal that you want is for a child to develop a secure attachment with your caretaker, which means that they are emotionally, physically taken care of and their needs are consistently met to the point that that child knows that they can reliably be dependent upon this person and that person is going to meet their needs. An insecure attachment happens for a variety of reasons. It could be physical abuse. It could be neglect. It could be emotional abuse. It could be a parent who's just emotionally inattentive. Um, it could be a parent who suffers from a disease or an addiction. Um, there's multiple reasons insecure attachments can happen, and many of us have them. The majority, in my opinion, from my framework, the majority of people don't have secure attachments. And so... It's not a stagnant thing. Attachments can be changed, but it does yeah. have implications for how you interact in adult relationships, what you look for, like it's kind of theoretical orientation, but we tend to repeat the things that we've seen. Um, and that can include relationships. Like we wonder, like a lot of people gravitate towards people who are similar to their parents. And so there's a potential that if you don't have a secure attachment that relationships are more challenging you're experiencing you know emotional neglect physical abuse like it's all around not great but it's something that can be worked on and healed from and that's why therapy is important not by exactly because i'm a therapist but does that have yeah. implications here maybe is mental illness a factor here maybe Could is be. jody like a massive horrible person yeah yes and there is also there's another point just because people have are mentally ill does not mean that they are violent because of that necessarily. No. no. There are plenty of parents who have some sort of mental illness or struggle or trauma who are perfectly attentive. Yeah. And supportive parents. Yeah. And if, you know, what we see often, like if we're going to have a little therapy corner here. What we see often corner. in Utah is the concept of a meshment, which is basically ill-defined boundaries and everybody is just kind of overlapping each other in a lot of inappropriate ways, um, like being dependent on each other for emotional needs, feeling responsible for other people's feelings, um, like 
the idea of kind of walking on eggshells that's really common in families um i've as a therapist working in utah it is a problem here and i think mormonism is a root of it because mormonism fosters it and encourages it so i wouldn't yeah. doubt if there was yeah, like one of the one of the documents the family a proclamation to the world essentially outlines children are to obey their parents and if so. you don't you know i wouldn't doubt that ruby's parents were raised in a generation that not all of them are in favor of like healthy boundaries and healthy communication there are plenty of like boomers and gen x who have no problems in these areas this isn't like a generational thing but it is more common and so if we have lack of boundaries and inappropriate overlap then codependence abounds and codependence is often replicated in adult relationships if we see it from family and parents and so it's likely that that dynamic was familiar to Ruby if she experienced it with her parents. And then that dynamic happened with her and Jody. And so she's familiar with that. Um, and so what does that mean is, oh, I'm familiar with this. There is some level of comfortability here. I'm familiar with these dynamics. I know how to navigate them. And it's much easier to fall into codependent patterns if you were raised in them. So that's just a thought. I see immense amounts of potential codependency happening between Jody and Ruby. Um, and it's going to be strengthened by the ideas that they were pushing out there, but also strengthened yeah. by Mormonism. Like boundaries aren't a healthy thing to do. Um, boundaries mean that you hate your parents and that you're disrespectful and it's a sign of disobedience. Like often in Mormonism, boundaries are perceived as disobedience and disrespect, which is a problem especially as adults try to set healthy boundaries like adult children setting parent setting boundaries with their adult parents becomes a huge issue okie dokie i think i'm gonna cut it off is that cool i'm starving wait i think there was one other thing i'm so hungry i'll, I'll allow it <laughs> Oh, yeah. Thoughts on the insanity plea? The insanity plea is extremely challenging to obtain in Utah. Like, second, I think we're only second. Idaho has eliminated it altogether, I think. And I think we're only second to Idaho in, like, the degree of intensity and the specifications that have to be met in order to be able to, like, qualify for an insanity plea. So I don't see that happening here. And that's in my non-lawyer opinion, but I do not see that happening here. I also don't think that Jody would admit to that conservative religious environments tend to foster enmeshment they do conservative religious environments yeah. tend to foster a lot of unhealthy things oh yeah okay everybody's telling us to eat okay ha -ha! thank you for watching if you have questions one. i want i want questions to be answered so drop them in the comments or yeah. And we'll try to get to them next time. Yeah. We, if we you are them. in the Discord, we can continue this conversation over at on the Discord. There is an eight passengers channel. Yeah. Join the Discord. I'll send a link to everyone right now in the chat. Snacks for McKay. Mail for Sam. <laughs> Wait. I'll put it in the before everybody oh. asks. We were going to announce it. Just a quick announcement real quick. We do officially now have a P.O. box. We do. It is. Let me say it right. P.O. box 1196 Brighton, Colorado 80601. And let me throw it in the chat. Dan is the queen. I, he can I do should have. Uh, I answer. I think I did. I answered it in the chat. But if anybody else was wondering, I usually get my shirts directly from their online merch store or the merch table at um, shows. That's where I get most of my my full of hell ones because those are the only shows I go to. <laughs> PO Box eleven ninety six. Here is the link to join the Discord if you'd like to go in the eight passengers channel to talk more about this. Um, 
And then if you, this is the time of year that everybody asks the same thing. Um, it is the continue to support us so we can continue to make content. So if you're not a member already, please consider joining. We have exclusive content for you. Um, and we would love for you to watch it and support us in that no, way. We need a palate cleanser, Kitty. We need a palate cleanser, Kitty. Both of them are down oh, here. Tom oh, he's about to dip. The other day, I Hi. tried to snatch Baloney to love on him, and he he gassed it. He got the fuck out of there. I was like, you hate me. Uh, and one last thing, Sarah Michelle, do you think you'll ever do a collab with Amanda Ray? We have tried twice, actually, and both times it just fell through. It was the worst we really would like to she was just on mormon stories though so go watch her mormon stories interview she's lovely i grew up watching like all kinds of random cult documentaries and i was obsessed with their show for a long time and we lived down the street from the order the whole she town only has one post office by our house is it times. uncommon for a town to only have one post office i tried to get tom to come over but he ran away so if you want to yeah. go on instagram you can see more photos of them make sure to go follow us on Instagram. yeah maybe that's my plug we'll we'll, po we'll post the cap the palate cleanser on instagram how about that yeah they're also being insane yesterday they're being fucking little terrorists they were indeed anyway we love you all we'll be back next week snacks for mckay mayo for sam we'll we see you, you soon all. see you next week bye